I'm Philip Flory, kit view time. We've got Tacom's brand new T14 Armata. Okay, now this is Russia's latest battle tank. Don't, we don't know too much about it at the moment. I'm surprised Tacom really jumped on this one really, really quickly. It's only really been sort of out and about uh, since May last year. Uh, when it was doing the Red Square uh, Parade uh, and we first got to get a decent look at this particular thing. It's supposed to be the new all-be-all um, all tank. Uh, it's a, you know, obviously if you believe the hype and all the rest of it, they say it's on par with the American Abrams. It does look very futuristic and it has got a lot of things which are brand new to tank warfare, which are very, very interesting. A bit like the crew isn't in the turret on this one. They are all down in the lower hull, giving them greater protection. So this is all fully automatic. Okay, so literally they are touting that this could be a first sort of drone tank as well in the near future. As well as obviously because this is, uh, you know, completely crew free, it's very easy to swap it over and turn it into different, you know, types and um, various things. They do a recovery version of this, a BMP version of it as well, uh, and everything else. So it is very exciting times for the Russian military. Obviously, as well, they're going to be looking at export like everyone, okay? And this could definitely be a contender for the near future. Anyway, enough of the history. As we can see, uh, Takam really, as I said, they were very, very quick getting this one out. Uh, so, you know, it makes you wonder where they got all the references and how accurate this thing really is. Uh, as we make our way through, we'll obviously now there's information filtering down, but seeing as the kit's been out now for quite a while as well, that uh, I'm just amazed how quickly they got it out. So basically a little bit up here saying about it, uh, detailed static plastic models we know, PE and clear parts included, all the doors can be open, four markings, uh, the gun has got uh, pitch control and it's individual tracks, so we'll be seeing about those, okay? Your kit number is obviously 2029, obviously this is 135th scale. There's the one, so I take it these are from the arm, Expo. So this is where we were saying the 9th of May for the parade. This is the first time it was uh, seen properly, um, you know, out and about without being bagged up and covered and all the rest of it. So there we go. That is from the Victory Parade, 9th of May, 1915, uh, 2015 even. Okay. Then we've got obviously Desert Warfare patterns. I assume this is the one where they're going to be putting them out for the expos and weapons. Uh, conferences and things like that as you can see. So we've got a breakdown so we know how to tack them to this quite nicely. It gives you the actual what you're going to get in the kit as well and a couple of other bits that are out and about and just the same down there. Okay so in the box, you can get that to stand, we can. Okay, this is Tackham's way of doing this. It's, it's very cube square screws and I do like it. Okay so we're just going to go down in the box and have a look to see what we have in here so we've got the instructions paint call outs and the photo etch okay so which we'll goes all in a moment so there we go beautiful looking manual as you can see so very nice color things Paint required, oh God, it drives me mad. Uh, okay, we're in um, MIG ammo colors again, which means we all have to go running out and find a conversion chart for it. Okay, so there we go. This is our sprue layout, obviously we've seen it on the box. Okay, and then we've got this sort of CAD way of showing it going together, which is quite nice. So as you can imagine, it's pretty much that standard way of doing it. One piece lower hull, and then to be honest, as we've been working on the T90, it's very similar, obviously on this lower hull, the way it goes together is almost identical for this one, okay? But it does look like the gear, although we'll check it, is already on here. Either that or I've missed a step. Oh no, it's gonna be showing those going in, but it looks like these aren't showing there at all. So it'd be interesting to see then we've got the rear drive, okay, and we've got the return uh, wheels going down on there, making up these guys exactly the same as we've been doing if you're watching us at the moment working on the Terminator, okay, and then we're into the actual bottom, putting the drive sprocket on, okay, and everything else. The rear plate going in together, some rear track and various lengths and tools going in on the back. Same again with this one, then the back half. Top plate going in on the top, and then obviously this individual click track system which does look like it is proper clicky five. We'll have a look check, but if it is, that's good. Okay, then we've got some more parts going on on the front. Obviously the, the, the hatches, there's three hatches, although I can only see two, but I thought there was three for the crew. Uh, each had their own hatch down here. 
on the front perhaps not okay but definitely we've got two down there as you can see side armor going on the sides okay these crew hatches going on on the top some more covers to the rear okay and then just pass going in rear covers going on okay got the um, passive uh, grill type um, uh, blast armor protection on the sides okay and then going on and we've got really reactive armor going down in there as well putting those all on all of those going together the turret as i say very very modular 120 millimeter gun i'm led to believe on this one if i remember correctly so it's quite a big gun which also can fire guided missiles through it as well which is a little bit different uh, we've got the smoke and uh, well the countermeasure discharges very noticeable on this one that run down underneath the side the gun itself two piece split I don't know if there's an aftermarket option coming along there there we go we've got the actual pitch uh, for the actual gun itself system going on and that clicks in into this front turret and then going on and in okay and then you've got all the sensors as you can imagine so we've got all the lumps and bumps uh we've got your stand i think it's 7.62 machine gun okay which is obviously mounted probably by the commander uh, control over that and then right the way down and then obviously all the bits and pieces the grills and all the tools the lights all those lovely little bits and pieces that make a tank going on and finally the turret on there and a couple of bits about the other ones okay and a nice CAD drawing on the back just like that okay so your color call outs as we said before somehow MIG's got the uh, thing on there so MIG obviously do the colors for these so you will have to jump out and either go through the MIG hoop or you're going to have to actually uh, get some uh, reference shots on this one obviously this is a brand new tank so they are calling out what if pattern so they're basically going on the pattern that you'd find on a T90 I'm putting it onto this one because nobody's going to be quite sure apart from where it's at the arms exposed okay so there we go a couple of different types down there and we've got on there i do love this splinter one and the terminator we're working on at the moment it's going to go into splinter we've got a mask set sorry decal set which is the longer ones these down here because i don't think it's got any more on it that's about it that was easy okay photo etch as you can see down in here it's nice it's thin very very nicely detailed and all the different bits like that as you can see down in there's no point debagging it in case we bend it okay that's those and then we into here so if we start in here no it hasn't got them in already okay so in the bag okay one of my criticisms with the terminator i'm working on at the moment which is obviously men the plastic is very thick it's very heavy this I don't know it seems a thinner part it's quite flexible but generally if we just drop this top can down so we get a get this look at the details you can see we have got some very nice details on this it's got like a texture to it as well it's almost got like an anti-slip texture on the areas where you would expect it and all the parts down there you are going to have to do a little bit of clean up where they cut out the bits in there but you see we've got the tack and mark down in there 2015 showing this was very recently done down there uh, and all the rest of it okay so pretty nice on all of that one and then this is that lower hull which does feel bigger than the uh, T91 I don't know why it just feels chunkier heavier taller you have got to put them all in they're not showing in there but obviously these are going to go in they're not the same as the main one where they're actually active suspension you know with torsion bars in through here it hasn't actually got those so it's just going to be literally static is static with this one so you're not going to have too much travel on the actual track system generally not too bad at all I thought there might be a little bit more detail down in here but it's all okay seems quite adequate no problem at all with that again very nicely done now where do we start let's put it in here so let's start with b okay so sprue b very nice cable in fact i think i prefer this to the string i've been getting the string in a lot of kits recently and it's horrible you have to wax it first then it's hard to paint it and well anyway so there we go that's very nice this is the under side of the turret we've got some nice details you can see down here at the back the ring there isn't much to look at on here this is just sort of you know passive uh, armor sweat set that they tend to do the old grills on the side to catch uh, uh, a inbound missile um, to detonate on this before it detonates on the the actual armor itself but generally very nicely done very nicely cleanly done the grill a little bit heavy perhaps i don't know maybe a little bit thick but uh there we go all right and then uh, let's see uh -huh. in these bags 
So in C, looking at this guy as you can see, very nice. Again, the parts all look blocky and chunky, but don't forget, this is how it is. So I'm perhaps I'm looking a little bit too much into this. Also having this square, um, you know, uh, sprue, it just makes it look square and chunky, but it does seem to be very nice, very cleanly molded, all the rest of it. Got the gun even embedded already into that particular one. The barrel itself looks quite nice. You've obviously got, as you can imagine, the bracing and all the bits and pieces onto it as you make your way down. Looking at all these parts, the track, tiny little bits of flash, if I'm honest, on most parts, but it's very small and nothing that a couple of swipes with a sanding stick wouldn't cope. That looks like it's about to give way and it is under pressure. I don't understand how it is now. Um, so there we go. Whoops. Okay. But generally we have got ejector pins, but they are all out of the way. Nothing's in anywhere that you'd worry about. It looks clean. Just a little bit of flash around the hatches and little bits of flash on various parts. But as you say, really nice, easy cleanup. You know me, I like to do the old bolt test. You run your finger over it and if it feels sharp, that's good. And to be honest, that's good. No problem at all. The bolts are all very sharp to touch. So uh, they're very nice and crisp molding. No problem with those at all. Okay, well we've got D. So we've got a twin for D. <coughs> okay, so we just get one out. <coughs> so D, you can see down here, we've actually got the the drive uh, and the return wheels and the various bits, well, not the word turn wheels actually, uh, but we've actually got the drive sprocket down here. Again, they're very nice and sharp uh, and everything else like that. No problems at all. Actually, I do like this bolting. This bolting around here, very nice indeed. Very sharp, very crisp. No problem with that at all. Looks very, very nice, all of that. Okay, um, side bits. Top of the turret whilst it's here. Can we get in this one? Okay, a couple of poly caps, as you can imagine. You're always doing armor. You're always going to find poly caps. And we've got the top of this turret. As you can see, lots of module stuff going to be going on here. We've got these raised pins, obviously, for holding them so they can be positioned. Got a small little uh, peg mark there from the injection process uh, as we make our way through. But generally, again, it's sharp, it's crisp. Actually, it's really, really nice. I don't think this is the prettiest tank in the world, if I'm honest, but I don't know, there's something about it. I don't know if it's something that is menacing or if it's, I don't know. To be honest, I've watched a couple of things on YouTube over the last couple of years when they were speculating about this. I'll just get one of these out. This is A, uh, sorry, B. <laughs> and it showed it with a very low profile, very reminiscent of the, um, uh, Israeli uh, tank with that very sloped armor set and the very low profile turret. That looks very cool. I must admit, it's a shame that I haven't done that one because that does look uber cool with it. I must admit, best looking tank out there with that on there. Okay, so here we go. This is the bit that's going to bore you to death. I mean, you're going to love doing. Okay, single link track. And because it's already onto here, you've got to cut each one off, clean it up, then put it together. <clears throat> Right, let's just have a quick go, see how cleanly we can get this off for one and how exactly it goes. Okay, so we're just, for the moment, just seeing how good we can get this off. And I just want to know how easily it goes together because what I don't want to do is have to go round and clean up every link okay so chances are we are we're gonna to have to go around and clean up that out a bit but just for the minute we just want to know how well this goes together and it doesn't oh nightmare so what we're actually saying is what you need to do is put two together like that we're taking it and then we have to put the other one on top because it's straddle. Because if it doesn't straddle, how's that going to go together? Hold on, let me just check. <coughs> Okie dokie. Talk amongst yourselves. Right. Just goes together and then the part sits on top. So it doesn't even straddle. So 
I don't know how you're supposed to put that together apart from obviously gluing it in that said position because there's nothing, it doesn't actually click together, which is a real shame. If that had actually pushed together and been a nice click together, because if we're honest, the detail of the track is very, very nice. It's a shame there's just not two little tabs to hold that together. Okay, so what you're gonna have to do is literally make yourself a line, glue it, and then make yourself another bit of a line. And then when you come to these areas where it's gonna turn and go round, build it on the sprocket, fold it in, then glue it afterwards and everything else. But the trouble is you've got to put each one of these needs to have one of these little guys in it and it's going to go each side. It doesn't over wrap. So unfortunately that is not going to be a quick job. Ah, never mind. Okay, so last part of that is the reactive armor on the sides. <clears throat> Okay, and as we can see, very nice, chunky, but beautifully done. No problem with that at all. That's very, very nice. Again, this detail with the pins and the bolts on these guys on the side here, extremely nicely done. We have got a little bit of an edge, just need a quick swipe with a knife uh, to clean that up, but generally no problem with that at all. Okay, and that is it. A couple of clear parts, as we know, it's not a lot of point to this. Armour glass, obviously, for the periscopes and the lights uh, just down there on sprue F. Okay, so there we go, that's that one done. So there we go. I was hoping now most armoured kits would come with clickable track because it's really, really nice. That particular track, I think, is very reminiscent of what you're going to get on a T90, the Terminator, things like that, I'm pretty sure. And I think you probably go down the aftermarket route, but I'm not an armor guy particularly very much. I know I do my bit of it, but nothing like the armor guys do. Um, if you're gonna make that much effort doing all of those, I'd be more inclined to go down the aftermarket route and do a metal set because I don't know, metal tracks just work really well. But looking at this guy, you know, there is no slack. You can't see any. So if you wanted to, you could obviously just take it from the top here to the rear and just do the underside, not even worry about the top, okay? And do it that way if you want to take a little bit of a shortcut. I'm sure by the time you've done it, you might as well do the top half as well. But I would just be hoping, modern kits these days are coming with clickable, workable tracks, things like that. It is nice to be able to put it in, rotate it a little bit so you get that nice type of sag and things you need on there. But modern tanks tend to have, you know, the sort of idler wheel at the back, keeps them under tension and all the rest of it. So generally you don't tend to get it too much like you used to. But just from a diorama point of view, if you wanted this thing, you know, so the track's moving slightly and it's waving, you know, and various things like that, and perhaps pushing into a leading edge, then a working track is a lot better than one of these which is gonna be glued hard and fast in the position. But there we go, well done Tacon for getting that one out so quickly. Crikey, did they have an inside job on that one? Okay, because it is absolutely beautiful kit, very quickly released. As I said, it would be nice to see the other versions of it as well, the sort of BMP type uh, and the recovery one as well in the series, because we know they do the three types of them off the bat. Uh, and then there's different things come out for it in turrets and that to get upgrades with it that perhaps you could change it over to different versions. But there we go, that is Tacon's 135th scale M14 Armata.